Mikhail Orlov was born on January 30, 1957 in Hammond, USA at birth. He received American citizenship and the name Glenn Michael Savo. After the divorce of his parents, the boy stayed with his mother, who raised her son in the spirit of humanism, instilled in him an interest in literature. Young Glenn quickly became addicted to the poems of Vladimir Mayakovsky, and with age, he discovered the works of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, which changed his views on the world. Souter became interested in the ideas of equality, justice and collectivism, which were dictated in the USSR. After receiving school education, the guy entered the university, but did not study there for more than six months. Passionate about photography, Glenn applied to the Academy of Military Photographers and then was assigned to the U.S. Navy, which was based in the Mediterranean. After the disclosure of information about Orlov's espionage work, American intelligence services began to look for reasons why the man defected to the USSR. Looking for more and more information about the Major's personal life, Michael was married twice. During his service in the U.S. Navy, his wife was the Italian Patricia de Palma, who gave birth to a chosen son. When the officer moved to Moscow, he married a woman named Eleanor, with whom he raised his daughter Alexandra. Sauter's military career began on the aircraft carrier Nimitz. At this time, the young man became increasingly disillusioned with the policy of the United States, which denied the storage of nuclear weapons on ships and often resorted to espionage against allied countries. Because of this, in 1980, Glenn turned to the Russian embassy in Italy and asked for assistance in obtaining citizenship of the Soviet Union. The profession of a young man interested the representative of the KGB Boris Solomatin, who suggested that Souter enter into cooperation with the USSR. Under the terms of the contract, a military photographer could become the owner of a Soviet passport only in exchange for secret information obtained at the place of service. To the surprise of the Major General, the guy agreed to the deal, but refused the monetary reward. Citing his devotion to the ideals of the Soviet Union and the desire to serve the good of his people, this case of ideological espionage is considered rare in intelligence history. Glenn then went on to serve in the U.S. Navy and became a sailor on the Invisible Front. He began to transfer to the KGB photos of weapons, ship routes, plans of the U.S. Military Command. Soon the guy entered the Old Dominion University to get the rank of officer. In parallel, he processed space intelligence files while working on a naval base. The young man enjoyed the confidence of the American intelligence services. When gaining access to classified documentation, he successfully passed the lie detector and did not arouse suspicion of leading a double life. Souter gained access to materials of national importance, among which was a list of objects of the USSR that were under the threat of a nuclear strike in the event of a conflict. However, due to the discovery of a whole group of spies among the officers of the fleet, Glenn attracted the attention of the special services. During the year he was monitored, the sailor was summoned for ideological discussions and then interrogations, which turned out to be fruitless. Only when there was a threat of a second check for lies according to the FBI protocols, the intelligence officer was urgently transported to Moscow in the autumn of 1986. The man received the citizenship of the USSR and the right to take on a new name. So Glenn Souther became Mikhail Orlov and settled in the capital, he began to study science, worked on an English language training program, and kept in touch with other members of the Soviet Special Services. For his services, the spy received the rank of KGB Major and the Order of Friendship. During his life in the USSR, Mikhail began to lead an active public life. He was invited to interviews on radio and television which highlighted the feat of a former U.S. citizen. During his lifetime, a film was made about him as part of the camera looks at the world program, 
and in 2019, 30 years after the death of the major. The documentary Sailor of the Invisible Front was filmed. The scout's biography was cut off on June 22, 1989. The cause of death was suicide. In his farewell letter, Mikhail wrote that fatigue and nervous strain pushed him to such a decision. He thanked his colleagues for their cooperation and turned to his loved ones, asking them to take care of each other. After his death, the men found his diary, where he wrote down his impressions of Russia. Some events saddened the major, especially Perestroika, about which he spoke negatively and wrote about the predominance of an anxious mood. Orlov was buried in Moscow at the Kuntsevo Cemetery. The grave is located not far from another Soviet spy, Kim Philby. The ceremony was attended by colleagues and superiors of the man. On Mikhail's instructions, he was buried in the uniform of a KGB officer.